Okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, everybody. It is Vaginal Fantasy Book Club broadcast time. As usual, we have everyone here. First, we have uh, Bonnie Burton. Hello. We have Kyla Kaysby. <gasps> you said it right. I know. <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> and the extremely glowing Veronica Belmont. Hello. I'm She's next to my wall. Your my wall. What's next to your wall? What do we call it? This uh, my divider. Oh, why are you oh. so over? Why are you over the barrier? Border? Uh, the why Veronica the barrier. <laughs> but why I'll are you still over there? It. Oh, boy. It's because it's alphabetical. The, the barrier <laughs> comes before Veronica. Vaginal comes before Veronica. See, it's alphabetical. My first name. I had, I had no idea that that's how they did it. Oh. There it is. <laughs> Why All right, sorry. That? We're digressing already. I know. <laughs> Guys, it's going to be a very unfocused hour because this was an interesting pick this month. But first, I have a couple of things to do. Um, I want to give a shout out to some local meetups. There is a group in Austin who's watching together from the forums. There is a North Central Florida group that's already had a couple of meetings. Um, the Canadian Beaver Dreams has uh, a meetup this month. <laughs> uh, that's what they call themselves. It's a subgroup. Wow. We don't control that name. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Beaver Dreams. Um, we have a Chicago meetup at the Bourgeois Pig at St. Louis at mm. St. Shameless Grounds. And as usual, we have our casual hangouts on the forum led by Vicky. Um, if you're new to the group, this is a book club, and we read two romance-oriented books. Uh, we have a main book, and uh, we discuss that book, and sometimes we get to the alt book, and people discuss them on the Goodreads forum, and we enjoy them all together once a month while drinking. Hello. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I think I Cheers. accidentally opened an expensive bottle of wine. Wait, so, why? I, I no, I just mean at, totally accidentally. Like, I think I just pulled an expensive one from the cabinet, and it looks fancy, so. Does it taste it's much better it. than, like, your, your regular? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, that's <laughs> worth it. Um, <laughs> before we get into the, the book, uh, which is Bonnie's Choice this month, um, I could not decide what kind of books uh, to pick for next month, so we're doing a poll. So during this Hangout, if you are a member of the, of the group, Go to the, uh, the Goodreads forum, and there's a poll there. So vote on one of the five categories that I put up there. And at the very end of the Hangout, we'll announce who won and what books we'll be reading next month. And okay. if you don't know exactly where that is, it's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash vaginal poll. V-A-G-I-N-A-L-P-O-L. Vaginal poll. <laughs> vaginal poll. <laughs> <laughs> That's a callback to an like... earlier joke you guys didn't hear. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> when you look at it, you read it. It says vaginal. <laughs> Bonnie, will you take this over and please describe the book for this month and why you picked it? Yes. First of all, I want you all to appreciate my Cthulhu tentacles that I have on my hands. Mm -hmm. They're amazing. Yeah. Where did you get them? I got them at a toy store, but I think Archie McPhee sells them, which is Archie McPhee. They sell a bunch of toys there in Seattle, but they're online. ArchieMcPhee.com. I got these at now, did you store. already? Did you own that before the book yes. pick, or did you buy I, them for okay, so let's do the a show? Quick rundown before I explain Cthulhu too much. I have a Cthulhu collection, so I have like Cthulhu toys. So I've got like Cthulhu cowboy. His <laughs> <laughs> little tentacles, his little what? cowboy hat. Sure does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm wearing a Cthulhu necklace, which you can't really see, but oh, I got the charm, and it's like little Cthulhu. Look how handsome he is. Oh. oh, yeah, and yeah. Veronica's wearing her necklace, her tentacle necklace. <laughs> Kyla looks traumatized. <laughs> Kyla, I am, I'm traumatized by this whole thing, honestly. And then, <laughs> well, don't let that stop you because I got you guys tentacle -y necklaces and I forgot to send them, but this was, this was Kyla's. Yay, it's so pretty. Yeah. With a mustache. It's an awesome and then this, piece of the mustache. This is, this is Felicia's. Oh, my God, but, orange is my favorite uh, color. Yeah. And they have mustaches because they're hipster cause they're hipster <laughs> And then, for those of you who, who follow along the other show, Tabletop, there's, uh, they mm -hmm. played a show, they played a game called Gloom, but there's Cthulhu Gloom. Wow. So um. you should play Cthulhu Gloom. So yeah, I have a lot of Cthulhu. I'm kind of cthulhu up. As and I don't, I, I think we need, yeah, the Fez is pretty good. Oh yes, yeah. and the Cthulhu Fez, <laughs> which I also. Which is cool. 
Yes. Yeah. Um, so, so the audience, uh, yeah. if you don't know already that Bonnie picked the books this month, and she picked our main <laughs> book, is called Cthulhu Rotica, and it's a yeah. short story mm -hmm. uh, collection of Cthulhu-oriented uh, uh, short stories. Uh, yeah. Bonnie, do you want to describe the book in a little bit more detail? Yeah, it's kind of cool because um, it's uh, a bunch of different writers as... Uh, you know, that's how anthologies run. It's just a bunch of short stories. So if you don't like one of the stories, you can move along to something else. And that's, oh, Felicia. You, I can already what? tell you this book. What? Come on. <laughs> I, um, I'm drinking whiskey for the first time out of a tiny Cthulhu shot glass Yay. that I bought you for your birthday you and never gave you. Wait, are you drinking whiskey too? Because so am I. <gasps> oh, I would have drank whiskey if I'd known. It was a theme. I, well, I, I just had to... <laughs> That's so oh. funny, Kyla. We always I drink know. wine, and this month we picked whiskey. Why? Yeah. Because tentacles are traumatic. That's exactly why I chose it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Bonnie, what are you drinking? <laughs> Bonnie, what are you drinking? I'm drinking uh, Moscato wine out of the giant glass that's as big as my head. And we're drinking wine because tentacles are romantic. Yeah. Oh, oh. More, romantic. Felicia, it's just, it's just more arms to hug you. Yes, oh, oh, okay. post-coital tentacle hugs. I didn't know oh. about a lot of hugs. Yeah, Cthulhu's really, Cthulhu's really a cuddle monster. Um, <laughs> I'm here, I, am, I am trying to put the love back in Lovecraft. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, okay, well, anyway, um, so this book, uh, which by the way, if you follow them on Twitter with the same title, Cthulhu Erotica, they're live tweeting this right now. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah. That's a little, were, that's nerve-wracking. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, <laughs> they're super excited that we read it. So I think, I mean, even if you didn't like it, you're at least uh, tweeting that it exists. And I that's think true. Like no, so I'm not saying I didn't totally like it. Well, let's go down the line. What yeah. did, so you discovered this book and you liked it. Uh, I, don't, I would assume you like it. Yeah, you tell so us what you thought. Friend, I have a friend named Gareth Bra Bronin. Bronin. I'm totally mispronouncing his name because I'm already tipsy, but he <laughs> writes the main going. And I had said er, earlier that in many episodes previous to this uh, on Vaginal Fantasy that I had uh, that I liked Cthulhu. I had a bit of a Cthulhu crush. And he's like, you should check out this book. And it's you know, a small press book of a bunch of different writers. There's poems and there's art in it too, but it's mostly short stories that are about three pages to six pages each, um, of all different times, like time periods and all different types of uh, sexy times. Some are very, very, whoa, like there is some description, and then there's others that's kind of like, eh, there was some sex, but it wasn't like big time sex, because I'm mm -hmm. always that person that complains in vaginal fantasy that. The sex scenes are a little bit, uh, so, not all the books, but some of the books, they're a little vague. Mm -hmm. And I kind of like, you know, get in there. Mm, okay. <laughs> Sorry, that was the wrong. I shouldn't have used the hand like that. Sorry. That was the wrong. Kyla's just looking down. Like, I don't know if she's just, like, oh, trying I'm... to breathe in the whiskey or what. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm looking. I'm just reminding myself of the stories that I liked and that I didn't, you know, okay. all this stuff. So yeah, my feelings. How, uh, I, okay, maybe I should explain who Cthulhu is. I'll yes, give us a little background as people who don't know, because, you know, I didn't have a lot of context for Cthulhu, and, yeah. uh, and all I knew was from things at conventions, like the things that you're showing us, but, like, on a deeper yeah, level, I, mean, I didn't Cthulhu's know. Cthulhu's weird because he's, he's a fictional, he's considered a fictional cosmic entity, um, and you can find out about him on Wikipedia, which I'm just going to read from so I don't mess anything up, but... He appeared in the uh, short story called uh, Call of Cthulhu that was published in Weird Tales in 1928, and obviously the writer was H.P. Lovecraft. Now, H.P. Lovecraft was kind of considered the godfather of horror uh, writing, like Stephen King. Uh, a bunch of off, like a bunch of you know authors have always said that they kind of were inspired by him. Tim Burton was inspired by him. Like a lot of you know icons in horror now were inspired by H.P. Lovecraft, very much like Edgar Allan Poe. The problem with H.P. Lovecraft is, in real life, he was a weirdo jerk. So, he kind of, yeah, he was really into the occult, but he was, like, super-duper homophobic, and it hated women, and mm -hmm. was, like, kind of a mama's boy, and he was a racist. I don't know, maybe that was just the 20s. I'm not sure. I wasn't there. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, he had, he, had issues. he had issues. I don't know. He had some sex issues, like, he didn't have any. 
Uh, mm. <clears throat> yeah, but anyway, uh, Cthulhu's been spelled like a zillion different times, and he's used in a lot of Lovecraft stories. Uh, mm -hmm. And because of it, he became like super, super popular in um, like with metalheads and goth kids and punkers and horror fans. And so he just became, I'm gonna say, he became the Betty Page of monsters. Mm, that he, okay. Um, wow. He was okay. used on so many album covers and used in so many references and and lyrics, and poems, and TV shows, and, uh, you know, he's got tentacles, and wings, and manly arms, and legs, and he's sexy. So, so you, okay, so you, I don't know, I don't even know what to say about this. Veronica, <laughs> Veronica, what did you think of the short stories? Because this is the melding of that mythology with, ro not romance, okay? Well, Let's just the say it, there's no romance. <laughs> if you read, oh, there is two, there's some romance. What? All right, let's go all down the line before we start fighting. Because I'm a little, I think we're all a little bit drunk and surly tonight. Because okay. <laughs> so, before we go further, because we are drunk, and since you're drinking hard alcohol, for I'm not change, drunk yet. God, you guys got started early tonight. I'm I better not catch drunk, up. But I'm just saying, because two of us are drinking hard alcohol for a change, mm -hmm. there might be. <laughs> That's all right. I haven't. I just you know. want to address really quickly that I love Felicia a lot, and I think <laughs> comments in our past episode where people thought we don't. We don't like each other. Bonnie, what? why are you reading the comments? Bonnie, don't read the comments. Read the comments. That's don't crazy. Read the comments. If you I read the comments, I, I have like a man face and, and like... <laughs> That's okay. Somebody... Someone on the tabletop episode said I was a bitch because I hate koalas. But I don't <laughs> well, really hate koalas. You are a bitch because you mean? hate koalas. I don't really hate koalas. Koalas, koalas can like... <laughs> Walls can hurt you. They can, they can screw you up. They've got like... <laughs> no. Somebody, I will not... Here. I will not hear a bad word about koalas. My no. Get out. That's why there's a barrier there. No, you cannot read the comments, Aww. Bonnie, and it's one person. Okay. Somebody well, no, the other day said, I need to learn how to do makeup because I look like Cruella <laughs> DeVille. <laughs> what? what? Internet! <laughs> um, okay. Wait. So, okay. Okay. So, okay, okay, first up, let me just. I just want to say, I'm not going to judge any of you if you didn't like this book, but I, there were stories in it that I was like, whoa, that's not cool. And then well, we're gonna get we're gonna get into that. We're gonna go right. down the list yes, of our we'll favorites. Talk, we'll talk about this. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, but, come come to the, this side of the barrier for a moment, and let me tell you. Um, <laughs> One thing, I promise I'll stop talking about the barrier. It's in my head now. Um, so the chat room is going to explode if you don't tell them where we got the necklaces from, Bonnie. Oh, oh okay. yeah. The ones that so I am wearing um, these ones. Yeah, and it's cool because they do, they're, they're called Unpossible Cuts, and they're on Etsy. And they're a laser cutter jewelry store, and they do all kinds of stuff. Ooh. Like, I've got Star Wars stuff from them. I have a TARDIS. I have, like, all different kinds of, they do dinosaur necklaces. They do. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, they do all kinds of, like, symbols and stuff that are very geeky, so there's some very cool geek chic girl stuff, and that's, I actually give those out as presents to all my geek girlfriends because there's so many cool stuff, and they're really affordable, so that's Yay. where I got them. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, and they're at most conventions, too, so check them out. So, um, um, getting back Veronica. to the book, yes, I yeah. did, I, I loved the book. I thought it was fantastic. Yay for a few different reasons. One, I just, it was so different from all the other stuff we've read. Um, two, I liked the short story element of it. I've enjoyed, you know, I, I love short story collections in general just because I, I like the variety that they kind of give and there was such, so much difference between each story and, and I mean, the first story just grabbed me so much because it was so dark and so sexual and there was so much tension and fear that I was like, wow, this is going to be like a totally different kind of book from anything we've read. And each story, you know, they, they had different kinds of scary moments. They had different kinds of sexy moments. Um, the writing styles were completely different. Um, and I thought that kept it very interesting. And also the writing was all really good, which mm -hmm. I appreciated as well. There was a higher level, I think, of... Of, of proficiency in the writing in these short stories than probably most of the other books that we've read so far. Um, so I thought that was, you know, with the exception maybe of Jack and Carrie. Um, so I just thought, I, I can see Felicia's poop face. She no! She's making a no, duty face at me right there. now. She I'm wearing is... sparkles. <laughs> I'm wearing sparkles. I love <laughs> sparkles. 
<laughs> so, but anyway, I liked it. There were some stories I enjoyed much more than others, uh, which I, we can talk about a little bit later because I, I did pick out a few of my favorites. Um, but yeah, I, I, and I liked the essays too. I thought that was really cool. Like I loved the kind of breakdown of why this is so popular in, in, in pop culture these days and, and why it has taken such a hold on people's imaginations. And it's just, I thought that was fascinating. Good. Uh, Kyla, do you want to go next? Um, yeah, I uh, I actually I really enjoyed it. I was uh, disturbed, but <laughs> but I enjoyed being disturbed. Um, I haven't read horror in a long time, and uh, it's funny because I just did this live storytelling event. I just talk about that for a second. I just did that, and I was talking about how I was reading horror all through high school, and then I just stopped. I haven't read any, um, and I never read any Lovecraft, and so. This was really interesting to go into that world, that, that Cthulhu world. And then I also liked that there was so much, um, uh, there, the sexuality was really fluid in, in every, not every story, but you know, like in a lot of the stories, much more so than in anything we've read. I really liked that. Um, and yeah, I, I really enjoyed it, even though I was uh, scared and grossed out sometimes. Yay! Okay. <laughs> um, Okay, I did not hate it, Vonnie. I okay. just want to go on record. Okay, here's the deal. I don't watch any horror films. I don't think I've ever seen more than three of them in my life. I had to leave Babe, Pig in the City and Godzilla, the new one, because I was <laughs> crying hysterically. So Wait, and those, are, were those, are the most hor those are horror films to me because Babe was in danger. <laughs> Wait. <Aww>. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I want to back up a minute because in one of your episodes of the vlog, you said that Babe was your favorite movie. Babe was my favorite movie. The sequel was horrifying. And if nobody oh, buys, have you seen too. both of them? I have no, I've seen. I've neither. I've seen neither of them. <clears throat> what? Of yeah, the Babe I know. movies. Well, I think I was afraid that the the pig would get killed. I'm afraid no. to watch animal movies in general. Yeah, me too. No, I, me too. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Know. Babe no, is. How yeah, did go Babe memorize all these lines? Died, How did the pig memorize that stuff? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Babe is the best movie ever made. I could cry just singing the theme song. But the sequel is There's much more adult song? and... Oh, Veronica, we need to go singing together. You have to, you That's have your to karaoke song, song, isn't it? I, I, I don't think it's legal for me to sing it, but I'll, do, I'll croon it to you next time I see you. Okay. But anyway... But but Babe Pig in the City was a much more adult film, and like there's a fire and all the animals are running, and I was sobbing. And I had to what? Leave. There's a it's fire. Like everybody's in danger. It's like an apocalyptic pig movie. <laughs> it was it was directed by the guy who did Mad Max, I believe. So what? <laughs> really? I'm not sure. That might well, not see, be now, true. I have to say, now you're selling this to me because I don't yeah. like the pig movies. Now that I know it's like a Mad Max pig apocalyptic movie. I'm totally watching that. All right. Well, g good. And then we'll get together and then we can talk. Oh, we can compare I'm notes. Sorry, Lisa. And you didn't I think Godzilla was too scary for you? Well, yeah. in the new Peter Jackson one, when they're capturing Godzilla, I started crying long. hysterically. Me too. Me too. You did? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was just sobbing. That, oh, that That's poor King Kong. lizard. That's not Godzilla. <laughs> King Kong. Okay. Veronica, it, was King, it was King Kong. Oh, you're right. King Kong. Oh, it was King oh, Kong. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. This it was is King Godzilla. Kong. See this oh, thing? It's whiskey in my mouth. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't... <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, well, whatever. Okay. The big giant thing that was attacking the city was dying, and we were crying. Exa it, was, it was King Kong. I, I was so yeah. traumatized, I couldn't remember what, yeah. what it looked like. Okay, and I anyway. Went with it. I agreed with you, because I thought that's what was happening. It was a horrifying scene, whatever movie it was, whenever it was. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically, short st I don't like any of and I was just so grossed out. I, c I tried to read this book, and I had to put it down for like two and a half weeks, and then I'd read a little bit, and I'd be like, oh, I can't do it. It was just, oh, guys, like tentacles. It, it was so dark. I loved it. It was scary, and it was so traumatic. Mm -hmm. Like, all the sexuality was so gross. Like, it was all, there was no was. romance or, like, genuine love there. That was what it was. It was all like very twisted and dark. I enjoyed it in that I appreciated the writing and I thought it was really well written. There are a couple of stories I did enjoy a lot, but like overall the experience, I just felt icky and it was hard for me to read just because it's so foreign to me and I don't like horror films or tentacles anywhere. Oh, but well, wait a minute. You did that episode <laughs> of 
tabletop and you were all tentacle party, tentacle time. But that was lighthearted. Were there any tentacle parties? Like, is hey, like wearing a, like a like a one of those blower things and confetti. That's what I think we're of when I think of it. gods. That's that's Cthulhu. Okay. I mean, I'm saying you, you picked well, and a lot of people in the forums agreed that they thought okay. it was really interesting also, and well written. So I the just question didn't is, want, I didn't want to scare you. I'm cold, grossing you out, but I didn't want to scare you. So oh, my question cool. is, so does all sexuality have to be love based? Like, does it all have to be romantic, or can something still be hot but not romantic? Can it be scary and hot? Yes. Is that okay? Yes. Or can it only be romance based? No, no, I don't know. I think we have a, a parting of minds because I, I realized actually reading this that I read romance books not for like the naughty parts necessarily, but I like the journey of two people who find each other and learn things about each other. So that's why I like romance. And I guess I didn't. I went in this. I went into this like with more open eyes, but like it's not why I read escapist fiction necessarily. Mm. That's that's a fair point. I find it even it's more been, like. This way, it's it's Wait. like a lot of people go to see horror films, yeah, because um, they like that thrill. They like to be scared, kind of like a roller coaster, right? Where you know yeah. you're not going to die at the end of the roller coaster, unless you're at Knott's Berry Farm and you're just sitting up there for two hours. But <laughs> you're, you know, you know you're not going to die. So like when you go see horror films, you know you're going to be scared, but you're safe watching because you're not in the movie. So that's kind of like horror fiction. That it it scares you and makes you think, but you're still safe on your couch reading. So that's kind of how I view horror stuff. Mm -hmm. So, but you know what? There are a lot of people out there that can't watch horror. You're not alone. I mean, th that's just my thing. I love horror. Like I actually yeah. read a lot of horror more than I read sci-fi, fantasy, and romance, just because that's what I like. Yeah, Veronica, you said you. So you thought this is like more titillating. It's this more. Kind of it's more lusty, I guess, in the vein of lust than romance, in mm. a way. Yeah, like, no, I got you. It doesn't necessarily have to be, like, like, romanticized sexuality. I think there's other kinds, too. No, you're right. And that's why I don't normally read, like, stuff like that. So I was really taken aback. Um, did we... We had a couple of questions um, about what stories... Do we have any stories that we uh, particularly stood out, mm. like, as your favorite or your oh, scariest yeah. or the yeah. grossest? That's oh. a favorite. What just happened? Yeah. Uh, hmm. <laughs> I think she lost audio for a second. <laughs> I did. I lost my um, my earphones when I I pulled them out with my book. Cause oh, pulled out my earphones. You're really serious, <laughs> Kyla. It's like a test. I feel like you you feel <laughs> like you're being tested for this. I will say, so serious. It's because well, they're short stories. Let's, so let's let Kyla go first then. Yeah, you Kyla go first. Tell us your faves. Tell us your faves. Yeah, tell us your faves. So you'll get oh, it off okay. your chest and get drink your whiskey um, a little bit more. <laughs> I really, I really liked, uh, I liked the Mars one. I loved the island one where you never, the guy was on the island and uh, Vic, yeah, and you never figured out what he did. And um, uh, the hippie one was really annoying, but I still kind of enjoyed reading oh, it. Oh, it was so annoying. That, that one was not my favorite. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. not a big um, fan of hippie fiction. <laughs> In general. Liked, In general. I really, just... liked, <laughs> I really liked the one uh, where the, um, Oh, the one with all the Greek um, mythos in it, um, where oh, yeah. uh, Ask a Maggot is or whatever, and the uh, Scylla, and she had all the hairy mouths. <laughs> that was between a rock and the elder goddess, right? The one yes. with yeah, yeah, that was, I agree, yeah, yeah, I was so, a lot. Yeah, I really like that one. So those, I think those were all my favorites. What about cool. you, Bonnie? Yeah. Which one was your favorite? I, I have to say, I loved um, the Cry in the Darkness. Oh, I picked that one too. So it's from the husband's, the husband's point of view. And the reason I love this story is because he's following his wife because she's sleepwalking, he thinks. Because he keeps hearing these, like, weird oh, sounds. right. Before. And she always comes back to bed with, like, muddy feet and a dirty nightgown and a big grin on her face. And I'm just <laughs> like, clearly she's cheating on you with Cthulhu, dude. Like, get a clue. But he's so, like, old school that he's like, I have to protect her and walk after her and see what's going on. It's like, it's so funny because it's from his point of view, so you feel like she's in this mortal danger. But if you're a chick reading this, you're like, no, she's just getting it where she can get it because you're not doing the deed right, and she's happy where she went. 
So the visuals, I, the visuals were very, were like super intense too, like yeah. the, the mental it imagery. Very, it was very much written in a Lovecraftian style. If you read yeah. any Lovecraft stuff, he's very, very verbose and a lot of words and a lot of just description. Um, it's actually kind of hard to read his stuff if you're not used to it. Kind of like when you read Shakespeare, you have to kind of get into it. After mm. a few plays, it takes a while, unless you're really into it already. Yeah. Uh, so I just... I just thought it was funny because he's clearly horrified and she's clearly satisfied. <laughs> but I just thought it was funny. And the fact that he's like, she had weird, you know, liquid on her stomach. Oh, that, that was gross. gross. That was so gross. gross. That, that was pretty gross. Why not know what that is? That's like, hello. Oh. That's but it was written in the most gothic style, I thought, that yeah. one. Which was really yeah. interesting. I was the most authentic lore, sort of Love, Lovecraft story, and it was almost like kind of Hawthorne, Nathaniel Hawthorne, yeah. sort of very yeah. gothic, old school. That the and, style of that one. Um, I also liked uh, what's the name of it? It's the one where she's. Um, it's a very very short story, and it's the one. Oh, I hate the title. What oh, is it? Daddy's girl. What is it? Oh, oh yeah. that was interesting. Oh, that was the one that I kind of wanted to read more about. I know. I wanted like, more. Which that was longer. So like, it was so short, mm -hmm. and it was just like mm -hmm. she's training this, like this Cthulhu type character, and it's like it almost reminded me, honestly, a little bit of Kashil's Dart, because mm. clearly they're training these Cthulhu's to be sex slaves for parties. Yeah, yeah, and, um, yeah, and then they have to use humans as test subjects to train them to be sexually whatever, and it's just so funny because the girl was like, she basically got her dad's assistant who was kind of uppity and bitchy to be the, you know, the test subject. But it was mm -hmm. just, I mean, it was kind of gross. I mean, they were like... Yeah, it was gross. That was... Oh, yeah, it was, it was pretty, pretty gross. gross. It was, was pretty gross. gross. Well, that was like, one of the grossest <laughs> ones to me. What about they you, Veronica? They were all pretty gross. Oh, <laughs> Veronica <laughs> better go. I feel like I'm losing cred. <laughs> oh, <laughs> why? No. <laughs> All right, so as you mentioned, um, the, uh, the, the one uh, which was The Cry in the Darkness is one of my favorites as well. Um, the one that probably screwed me up the most was The Fishwives of Sean Brawley. Oh, yeah. oh that was the worst. Oh, oh, it the screwed me up because that was really the one where it, it pulled me into the story, <laughs> and then suddenly you're like, what the f What? <laughs> Like you well, kind of, we've gotten a little yeah. desensitized, I think, by that point. You know, you yes. kind of expect the tentacles. You kind of expect the, you know, yeah. like the women going to the Cthulhu in the nighttime. But then all of a sudden, you get this one. You're like, what? What did he? He just did what now with the on the what? So that was a little terrifying. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That was. We're allowed that, to say yes. spoilers, right? I mean, we. we yeah, yeah, we yeah. Have yeah. Oh, what is this? What is that thing? What is happening? Oh. What is happening? Oh, oh a tentacle party! Inappropriate no. tentacle party. <laughs> tentacle party. Is it the animated gif of you <laughs> tentacle dance? <laughs> oh, boy. But yeah, he straight up, he straight up killed his wife. And that was yeah. pretty yeah. Yeah. messed up. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's disturbing stuff in here for sure. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that one, that one was, that was kind of scary. Um, I also liked, let's see, oh, also, I guess I picked two of the most screwed up ones that had to do with dudes, <laughs> and I wonder why, the, the fish eater <laughs> one, the amid disquieting oh. dreams. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. That, that, one like, was, that one was weird. That was weird. It was, wasn't yeah. it? Which one was that? Like the fish one eater one? guys with the big staffs, and they were like peeling back the fish and eating them while they made him do all this oh, messed up yeah, stuff. Oh, yeah, this is your fish eater, yeah. and yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I skipped over <laughs> that fish one. Eater. I had to skim it, yeah. Well, oh, how come, what made you decide to skip it? It was, was just, it just the, like the imagery of it was really disturbing to me. It's the same thing as the fish wives. Like, I actually started skimming that one just when he started describing the fishwives as these kind of bloated, underbelly, oozy women who he's attracted to, it was the most traumatic. Yeah, yeah it was very it traumatic was for me. This, describe the <laughs> smells. Well, there's a but lot don't, of don't describing so the smells in these stories. Yeah. Like, I always think it's so... Well, I think what gets me about these stories is it's so intriguing. Like, what kind of, of dark powers make these people go so crazy and, like, you know... Right. Bloodlusty in a way. It's that's not the right word because I know yeah. what bloodlust actually means, but it felt mm -hmm. right to say at the time. It's but like, you know, it's, yeah, it's like they can't control right. their urges in a way, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's almost like you're under a spell. It kind of reminded me. I know this isn't a fair 
Um, this isn't really a fair parallel, but kind of like with Bram Stoker's, you remember the movie version of Bram Stoker's Dracula where with Winona Ryder, remember? And so mm -hmm. it, it implies in that that they can't control themselves and they go out to have sex with Dracula when he's in werewolf form because he shapeshifts in many different forms and they can't control. It's kind of like that lure to the vampire where you can't control yourself. You kind of know what's happening, but you're so driven by lust I almost feel like that's the same, at least in this book, not in Lovecraft's books. In Lovecraft's yeah. books, there's no, there's no sexy times like this. That's why no. this book exists, is because Lovecraft didn't have any sexy times because he didn't have any sexy times in real life. So I don't <laughs> think he would know how to write about it. So yeah. for this, in this book, I feel like it's it's that weird draw where you can't control yourself mm -hmm. and on to this creature. So it's not like they have this predisposition towards being attracted to tentacles. It's just like the there's power. Something... Yeah. Right. It draws them in somehow. I thought um, one of my favorite ones was the C word, which uh, which was <laughs> kind of like the, it was really? kind of it was really? kind of the indie version. There was an indie movie with a touch of Lovecraft where there was like the older woman and the guy who they kept being together, but she was getting older and tried to push him away. Oh, yeah. But she that made a deal. Kind of yeah, yeah. It was kind of, that was the one with romance in it. Because yeah, yeah. Just, I like that one. I had a feeling you would like that because I dubbed that the heroine mod of Cthulhu. Oh, <laughs> what? Oh, that's adorable. That's adorable. <laughs> Felicia's gonna like this because they cuddle and everything. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. thank you. Where's the cuddling with the tentacle? No, there's a. Um, well, no, I Mars really like one, that. The Mars one was romantic too. I mean, yes. you know, in that he found his soulmates or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or she did. She found her soulmates. I, I, I like the C word one too just because, you know, it didn't have any tentacle sex or anything, which is probably yeah. one of the reasons you liked it. But I also liked it because he made a mistake and said, uh, you turned me, you turned of me from a prince to a frog, and I think he meant to say the other the other way. You turned me in from a frog to a prince, and because yes. he said that, she like freaked out a little. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because of the whole in, the whole amphibian Cthulhu thing, and I thought it was really sweet that she just like dropped her fork and was like, "What?" <laughs> yeah, no, I thought I thought the writing was really good. I mean, there was none none of the none of the stories to me were not well written. In in fact, like some of them just felt a little short. Like they could have gone on longer. But, you know, um, it's just a tone, like, of something I just, I'm not used to reading. So it was yeah. kind of, and then there was one other one that I thought was crazy traumatic, uh, what was it called? In, in, the Infernal Attractors, where the guy had the, the piece of machinery and the girl was just, like, going crazy oh, yeah. Yeah. and everything. That, oh. was, that was weird, too, because I had to read that three different times. To visualize it properly, because the first time right. I read it, I thought it was just a sex machine. Uh, where yeah. She, you yeah. know what I mean? Like one of those weird contraption robot yeah. sexy things. Yeah, sex trap. Yeah. And, then yeah. I was like, well, and, and I couldn't figure out what, at the end, you know, yeah. what what it was that he saw above him was that he was in love with the girl, but that no, was his demon. His own, he got his own demon-y thing. Yeah, yeah but, so, but his like, demon was that he was in love with the girl. on his shoulder. Girl. Right, yeah. right, okay. He got a Cthulhu on his back, as it were. I know, yeah. I thought that was weird. It felt like, it almost felt sci-fi instead of horror. Like, it felt like some sort of Barbarella sex machine slash William yeah. Gibson yeah. erotica thing. Which I thought I just, was kind of interesting, too. Yeah, yeah I and I've been, I've been watching... Sci-fi. Yeah, I've been watching um, uh, this last season of Fringe, too, like, rewatching it, and it reminded me of the thing they put Peter in. <laughs> They put Peter Bishop probably. in the machine. <laughs> yeah, probably. Only that was a sex machine. Maybe a whole other kind of fridge. Uh huh. Well, it does create a hole. It creates a, some kind of hole. So. Yes. Oh. Oh boy. <laughs> um, Karen on the forums asked, uh, "Would any of these short stories translate into a movie? Do you guys think any of them would?" Um, yeah. I actually. I kind of thought that the assistant from Innsbruck, which was where the guy goes to evaluate the estate of of an old of someone who died, and then this mm -hmm. beautiful woman comes to, to try to help him. They're evaluating all these old relics and everything, and, and it turns out that she's a monster, and he gets sucked into this cult ritual thing. I thought that was kind of an interesting story arc between them. I like that. I could see that as a movie. I could see that as a TV show, even. Um, like, who would you... um... Oh, go ahead. You go, go ahead. ahead. 
No. <laughs> you want to go. Okay. I, I think that uh, Flash Frame would make an interesting movie. Oh, is that the that Indian was... one? Is that the... No. No. no? Oh, okay. about. This Sorry. is the one where, like, the journalist living in, in Mexico City who goes to the movie theater and, and sees, like, the film... And it has like these flash frames oh, of, of yeah. like the weird uh, yeah. like orgy kind of scenes, and and I still am not really a hundred percent positive if it's a female or male uh, protagonist in that story. I think it's yeah. a guy. I think it's a sure. guy too. It's the girl in yellow, which is basically my room, and that yeah. was a terrifying one because it was more psychological versus yeah. like there's just tentacles like you know assaulting you. That that one was more like you watch this movie and then you suddenly get. All these nightmares. That the sound is yellow. Dead. That's the first line. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was I pretty actually, weird. I, interesting. I thought that would be a great movie. And you know what's sad? Um, I'm a huge. This isn't what's sad. This is actually cool. I'm a horror film <laughs> fan. But what's sad is there's not very many Cthulhu movies out there. In fact, mm -hmm. there's very very few. And the ones that are out there are either comedy like American Pie type horror things, where it's just bro movies that are just bad. Really. Or just do references to Cthulhu, but it's not a full Cthulhu movie. And and there's H.P. Lovecraft movies where it's about him, or mm -hmm. he's fictionalized in a way. Um, but I, I really, it, it breaks my heart that there's not any decent, like I would love Guillermo del Toro to do a Cthulhu movie. You know, I would love, um, you know, even um, any, any indie movie directors to do one. Um, Gareth Edwards, who did Monster, I think, who's doing the new Godzilla movie. I think he would Oh, do I it. love that movie. Did you guys see that, Monsters? Yeah, it was such a, oh. pretty, it was a pretty movie. I saw you know, it. It was, it was, you know, was low-budget indie horror monster film, but the monster is so... It's such a great reveal at the end, and so it's a, a moving movie. It's not horror. It's it, There's times when it's, like, a lot of tension, but you, it's a romance. Yeah. It's a romance. I actually got irritated with that movie. Really? I, yeah, I was irritated by that couple. <laughs> I was just like, I <laughs> wanted them to die. I, was just, I, wanted, I needed more monsters and less of that couple. I love you, Kyla. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I know, I'm kind of like that with most monster movies, like... The Host, um, which is a great Korean um, horror film. Mm -hmm. If you haven't seen it, please do, because the first 20 minutes of The Host is probably one of the best sequences in a monster film. But the main characters, the humans, I always get annoyed with. I'm the same way with all Godzilla movies. I, mm -hmm. And camera movies, like all those movies, I want all the humans to Ah, the humans are you want Kenny to die? <laughs> See, I don't think, the thing is, I don't watch any horror movies, so I'm confused about why I like this book so much. Oh, really? Do you I not like horror, horror films? Movies. I or... hate horror movies. Yeah, well, there's a difference horror. between horror films and monster films, because a lot of yeah. the monster films aren't really horror. Because to me, the scariest horror films that actually I, I have a hard time watching are the ones that are uh, about serial killers or based on true stories. Like, I don't yeah. want to know about the evil in humans. I mm -hmm. want to talk about evil that doesn't exist. So to mm -hmm. me, I like anything that's not related to a real life slasher. I can't watch slasher films. I have a hard time with exorcism type films, just because mm -hmm. I was raised Catholic. So I. What about you, Kyla? What about you, Kyla? I love, I love all horror movies. I love all of them. You watch them all? That's so yeah. weird. Then. <laughs> yeah, I love horror movies. I that's they're awesome. just like candy for me. Oh, yeah. God. I, I can't think you, of a I... worse way to spend like an hour and a half to two hours. Me neither. I just want to freaking. <laughs> I even oh. watched those human centipede movies. It was <gasps> no. <but laughs> Kyla, that is so I... weird to me. Really? Yeah, I like scary like books, but I can't do scary movies. I've always loved horror movies since I was little. I've just I. That's they're awesome. My favorite. <laughs> yeah, I actually, yeah. my mom let me watch like uh, a Nightmare on Elm Street when I was like seven, and I swear oh, for yeah. like a That's decade. That's a bad idea. <laughs> yes, yeah, I, I think I maybe watched... I just watched too many scary movies like underage. My mom. I think that's what happened aliens. to me too. No, yes. when I did that, I did that. I had cable in my room. I don't know, single mom. She let me, and I watched <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street. And I was like nine, and it was on HBO. And I had to stay awake and watch whatever that show was they had on HBO. Like it was about sports. Like it was like a sports show, not sports night, but like that. And it was. Mm -hmm. I had to watch like nine episodes after that <laughs> till like four in the morning because I couldn't move or go to. sleep. I, I was so terrified. Hey, Kyla, Kyla, you might be too young to remember this because I think I'm the oldest in this group. But um, do, you remember, do you remember Night Fright? Yeah, Fright Night. Yeah, 
Night Fright was great. And Night Fright are great. And then you had like you had like all these great. And this was in the eighties. Which is weird, in the 80s and the early 90s, there were a lot of late-night horror shows, like Creep Show. Yeah, I watched and, all of those. Yeah, Fright Night, and like, or not Fright Night, though Fright Night Tales, was funny. Was but, Tales from yeah. the Crypt one? Was that yeah. real? Yeah, oh, I remember movie. that when I was a kid, Tales from the Crypt. But that was like a yeah, puppet. Like actually scary. That was like fake. Was that fake scary, or was that it real? It was fake scary. scary. It was scary, though. There were some yeah, scary ones. The puppet was the host, but then you'd yeah. have actual real... But you know what? A lot of people got their start on that show, like... It's funny because I watched, I had, I got the DVD box set, and it's funny because like Ewan McGregor's in an episode, and like really? all these. Oh, wow. people, yeah. yeah. Is he naked? Because he's always naked. He yeah. Always well, loves getting he's naked. Naked-ish. Remember yeah. when Harvey Keitel always got naked? Oh yeah. Yeah, I didn't yeah, do I that. Okay. <laughs> Jesus, talk so about. I liked, I liked Goose, Goosebumps, <laughs> and Are You Afraid of the Dark? And I did um, too. Yeah. As we we're supposed to say now, Gersperms. So I mean I honestly I Oh my god Gersperms. Oh my god this is awesome. <laughs> that has to be an animated gift at some point. <laughs> oh my god. What the hell? I was just going to say that if you, if you read horror, there's usually sex scenes in most horror books. Yeah. Yeah. But if you watch so, Cabin in the Woods, which is the only horror film I've watched in the last probably eight years, that was a great movie, movie because everything it was. It was so good. It was, Sorry. it was. Everything was kind of a play on all the tropes of that. So it was really clever. So anything that was in it. Did you not like that movie, Veronica? I didn't see that. It's oh, not scary. Really? I literally it's have so not good. watched a scary movie. The sc- I can't. The scary movie it. I probably watched in the past ten years was like, I don't even know you guys like Transformers. Like I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I passed out during District Nine. I passed. Oh out yeah, I remember in the you movie told me theater. That. Why? Like, and I wasn't even sca- I was excited to see that movie. And then the gross stuff with the fingernails started happening. I was like, yeah. I don't feel so oh, good. Yeah. Like, what gross stuff? So There's fingernails in Transformers? No, no. District, 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 District Nine. I was joking oh, oh. about Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> I was joking. Oh. That was a joke. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I don't do though, I don't do scary movies. Sorry. I did. I really did love Cabin in the Woods, but I'm kind of pissed off at Joss Whedon. Why? Uh-oh. Because <laughs> don't Felicia spoil it. In that movie, the what? Oh, you should have been in that movie. You oh. should have been in that movie. I can't, I can't be in everything that everybody be I know does. In all the things. <laughs> all the things. No, but you can be in every Whedon thing. <laughs> no, that's rude. <laughs> I like just just <laughs> enough. Just enough. Okay. Um. So does anybody want to want to say anything else about this book? Because we're going to move on to our alt book. Yes, I, I do want to say something really quickly. Um, you can follow Cthulhu Erotica. Uh, it's Cthulhu Erotica on Twitter. Cthulhu um, they're, Erotica. They're really fun to follow because they've been live tweeting this whole thing that we've been doing. So I know. I've of, been checking the hashtag. They've been taking yeah, all, it, all the salient points, which is great. Right. And I I feel sad because I missed their deadline, but they have a second book that's coming out. Uh, they did a call Yay. to writers, I think, last a couple weeks ago. But they have a second book, so if you like this one, or if you want to, if you haven't read it yet, or you can't find it, it's on Amazon. But they're also selling it on their website, on um, the Cthulhu Erotic website. But they have a second book coming out too, so check oh, it out cool. if you like this one. Awesome. No, it's and it's cool because it's an independent publisher, so yes. we're supporting this independent publisher. So yeah. Yay. If you, yeah. Yay. Um, is everybody voting on the Goodreads poll? Remember that Goodreads were uh, voting during the hour, and I'm going to pick whoever, whatever category you guys uh, vote on by the end, and I will announce the books for next month. So you guys are choosing the category. There are five different categories. Vampires, werewolves, uh, demons, Yay. fantasy, or angels and gods. So um, cool. and, okay, and another Bitly link I would like you to click on because we're moving to our next book is Bitly slash eternal <laughs> pleasure because eternal pleasure is our book of the uh the, our all book this month I, got, I dressed up for that you, so, you're dressing up for it i have to say this is the first mm. time i've ever done a vaginal fantasy cthulhu or cthulhu a vaginal fantasy costume change 
Oh my god. Okay, oh, so while you're doing that, I'm going to tell everybody the 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 bitly uh, slash eternal pleasure leads you to the book trailer for this book, and it is one of the best pieces of video <laughs> I've ever seen put together. We can't show it on air because we don't have the rights, but if you watch this book trailer, you will be like, this is the best hot mess. I mean, just the guitar alone and the and the <laughs> partially naked. I have to men. watch it. I'm going to watch it. What? It's great. You haven't seen it? You haven't seen it, Veronica? <laughs> no. It's awesome. No. Where's the link? How can I work? Can I, oh, there it is. It's, eternal pleasure. Got it. It's a bit, it. bitly slash eternal pleasure. While make sure you don't use the music, Veronica. But um, while you're in. while everybody's watching the trailer, I'm going to describe to you the book. Eternal pleasure. The gods of the night are incarnated for the first time in 65 million years, summoned to protect from all and humanity from an all-encompassing evil that is coming in 2012 at the end of the Mayan calendar. While currently incarnated as deadly handsome men, they have the ability to assume their prior forms, those of gigantic <laughs> dinosaurs. <laughs> they cut out a bunch of people and stuck them in this picture. Oh my god. <laughs> I hope everybody's watching that book trailer because it's, it's massively entertaining. Um, one of them, Time, Ty, and Decca, develops a powerful attraction to his driver, Kelly Malloy. She never expects to be drawn into this world of demons, vampires, werewolves, and other kin, namely dinosaurs, but... When she is, she handles it with aplomb, even when the Eleven's mysterious leader, Finn, tells her she has a crucial role to play in the coming fight. So, what do you guys think? I hope you're watching, and Bonnie is contributing. <laughs> <laughs> you got what is that thing? It's a T-Rex costume. It's actually, it's, a, it's called a Cushzilla. So it's like a blanket, but it's Godzilla. Rawr. Oh, it's so Rawr. amazing! It's really <laughs> cool. well, I'm too hot, though. Sorry. So I, okay. I watch a lot of I watch a lot of book trailers in my line of work, uh, and yeah. uh, that was literally the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> that was just like, what was clip art galore? I don't know. There was like so breaking glass I, and. I have a confession. People I made of electricity. Trailer, like every day to laugh because I. Think <laughs> <laughs> Guys, on work. I passed it to all my writer friends. Um, Nina, if Nina Bangs is watching this right now, and she's on Twitter, by the way, is Nina Bangs. I love that book trailer because it's like mystery science theater book trailer. No, I it is the best. Awesome. Now, bef before we say what we thought about the book, I'm going to read a couple of the forum comments. Okay. Um, Anna said, "Even though Eternal Pleasure is extremely cheesy and bad, I feel weird giving a low star rating because I was so entertained. I have never <laughs> highlighted book quotes until this book." Do do the do you, the women think the author of this novel could have possibly taken this book series? It's so off the wall crazy. Her favorite quote was, "Thou shalt not make love with a dinosaur, no matter how sexy he is." <laughs> It's true. Justine on the forum says, I don't know if I can read on the bus anymore after because I had to stop myself from laughing out loud at the, quote, erotic blasts, unquote, the main character was getting hit for, with from the guy. And, uh, yeah, so that's what the forum thought. That was pretty much consensus. Yeah. What did you think, Kyla? <laughs> Me? Yeah. <laughs> I actually didn't uh, get a chance to read the dino Aww. one. Aww. I'm well, that's sorry. Okay. I moved this month. So I oh, gonna... okay. Well, okay. don't worry about it. You're gonna, we're going to spoil everything, and you'll still want to read it. Bonnie, Do it. Spoil it all. Bonnie, uh, well, let's go with Veronica, because you got halfway through because you were a little busy <laughs> mm -hmm. this weekend doing something. Getting Somebody married. Somebody got married. Like Yay. the end of one of our romance Yay. books. I couldn't help myself. Yay. I just had to get married. <laughs> No, yay! Um, so yeah, I did. I got about 20... Uh, no, I got more than... Yeah, I, I'm about halfway through. And I, I was enjoying it. I thought it was great. <laughs> like, I was having a lot of fun reading this book. Like, it was it was hilarious. I thought your lizard, Bonnie, was moving, but it was just your dog wiggling dog the cushion, and I thought your lizard was alive. So I've got dinosaur galore. I had... Because, you know, if you're watching Doctor Who, which you should be Veronica, there was a dinosaur <laughs> Doctor Who episode. So I was like... Rawr! So I got like dinosaur stuff. Um, so I had the TARDIS back here with some dinosaurs and Godzilla because you know. Yeah. But yeah, I thought it was hilarious. It was just so off the wall, redonkulous. I just couldn't deal. It was. I, I'm gonna finish it because I think it's great. I haven't had a chance to read any of the alt picks in a really long time, and this one, I'm like, I'm in it to win it. I'm gonna finish this sucker. Awesome. I don't care. I have to know what happens. <laughs> I'm. I can't believe they have the most silly names ever. Oh, they're they really do. 
I love how even <laughs> they think their names are ridiculous. They do. I love how suddenly just vampires and werewolves are showing up like out of nowhere. Like it's just like it's it's like everything I love dinosaurs. So I love dinosaurs. Like dinosaurs are one of my favorite things ever in in the world, in history, whatever. And so I was like and Felicia and I have a joke about dinosaurs. So yeah. that goes yeah. back to an early oh, NaNoWriMo you... idea that I had. <laughs> but they tiny <laughs> arms. And, tiny and it was not a romance <laughs> novel, by the way. <laughs> but so when I found out that we were doing a dinosaur-related pick, I was super excited. <laughs> this and has you were not, not disappointed. disappointed. This is not disappointed. If you um, want to see dinosaurs <laughs> in ways you never thought possible, this is the pick so for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Bonnie, what did you think? I'm going okay, to go last all... because I have some quotes. I have to do the quotes because okay. you can't take this book seriously and say this is a great book, but you can read what? it with an absolute... Well, you can't, you can't okay. be like, this is no, great no, writing right. and great characters in a way yeah. that is like, yeah. you know, but this you can say not... I'm having the funnest time ever. This is not, this is not Wuthering Heights. This is like... Yeah. I'm a big Mystery Science Theater 3000 fan. This feels like if they wrote a romance book... <laughs> <laughs> but I will say, I'm, okay, so just backtrack, I'm a huge fan of dinosaur cartoons, so uh, mm. Dino Squad, mm -hmm. if you look up Dino Squad. Squad, which I tweeted about earlier today, it's a cartoon from like the early 90s, mm -hmm. and it's about teenagers that transform into dinosaurs, so mm. I thought maybe this is them grown up having sex. Oh. <laughs> so... I did say grown up. I said grown up. I'm not talking about preteen dinosaurs. Maybe think of it instead as the family from Dinosaurs, the oh, puppet no. TV oh. show. Oh, oh that's no. better. That no. instead. Not the mama. No. Not the mama. Oh, my God. Oh, oh man. She, you're the queen of impressions, like, like of, of nonsensical impressions. <laughs> my, my joke is that I don't know. The only impression I can do is Lumpy Space Princess, and I already did that on the show, so now <laughs> I have to find new ones. It's kind of just. Wait, is it, isn't Greg Argano, Arganowitz? He worked on dinosaurs. He did. Greg Aronowitz, uh, the production designer who works on many of my shows. I believe he yeah. did work on that. Maybe yeah. he should have done a book too. trailer for Eternal Pleasures. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that would have made, um, made it better. Here's the other thing. I, I have a request of all the Vag fans out there. So, you creative types, I think we should do our own trailer for this book. Uh, if you think you could do a better trailer, I think you should post it to YouTube after you read the book. Because I'm going to. I'm making puppets. I'm doing a whole... Yeah. Are you kidding, Bonnie? Yeah. No, I'm not kidding. I love this book. So I am going to do... I'm going to redo the trailer <laughs> with puppets and bad music that I'm going to compose. to my... Can I, I can't help? wait to see this. Can I help? Yeah. yeah. Veronica, we're totally doing this. But I, wow. I love this book so much because it's so out there. I was so I had the same problem. I ride two different trains to get to work, to get to revision three. So I'm like riding two trains. One of them's kinda like the tough kid train. It's like, you know, it's like a rap video without the glamour and crystal, but all the smells. So I'm like reading this book, <laughs> laughing my ass off, and this woman next to me tonight even, because I was rereading passages that I wanted to bring up, was like Looking at the cover, she's like, girl, that looks like a good book. What's that all about? And I was like, it's about dinosaur shapeshifters having sex and fighting vampires. And she thought I was on crack. <laughs> she was like, what? And I'm like, no. It's, it's, she's like, and if you look at the cover of the book. Which oh, I the have book. Here, Show the cover. It's Benicio no Del Toro in Brad Pitt's Love Child. Yeah. There's no dinosaurs. It's just like a oh hot God. dude, but there's no there's no dinosaur. There needs to be there needs to at least be the shape of the dinosaur. It should yeah, be. Well, a, we, well, we like haven't explained to, 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 right to non-readers is that when they when they go into so they're basically the souls of dinosaurs. Yes. So totally. when they take their dinosaur forms, there's like kind of like a, a an aspect of them inside the dinosaur. I don't know. Are they moving like the dinosaur? I That's know. what I wanted to know. Are they just like out. sitting inside <laughs> of it? Or are they like... They make, <laughs> the they make the sounds because they talk about that at the beginning of the book. But, they make, but, it, like, isn't a, but it isn't a physical <laughs> dinosaur like that. It's like it's a like glowing a, outline. So like, they're like a ghost a dinosaur, dinosaur, but it still yeah. has matter because it can attack them. Exactly. It can kill things. So right. what kind of outline, though? I mean, is it, it like, is it a brontosaurus outline? No, there's no, no, every a triceratops and an allosaurus. <laughs> yeah, every guy like, has a different dinosaur. 
What's yeah, really? King's dinosaur? It's like a. I don't know how to pronounce it because it's as okay. as tech or Mayan. So So the book's kind of crazy because when you read the first few chapters, you're like, okay, you're trying to wrap your head around it. So there's these mortals that want to wipe out humans, right? But they can only do it at certain times of the The, year. The calendar year, which is now the Mayan calendar in 2012. And then this guy, Finn, who has sparkly silver hair. He's a... He has sparkly hair, like literally, yes. his, he has glitter hair, and somebody Finn. on the forum was, was like mentioning what kind of like Christmas ornaments he had in his hair, because it was always like sparkly <laughs> white hair. He has tinsel hair. Tinsel, tinsel hair, that's it. He has tinsel light. hair. Tinsel Very hair. light. So we don't know what Finn is. <laughs> Finn is like a mystery. He's a mystery, okay. but he's the one who reincarnated these guys, and literally they haven't been alive in, t- they say, like 45 million years. Like they, yeah. This is the last time... And that's why they need drivers. They need hot women to drive they them around. Drivers. <laughs> they need drivers. They need Uber drivers. cabs. <laughs> they have, they have no, Uber cabs. Because everyone knows the dinosaurs couldn't drive. Let me, let me, oh, let me read it down. Isn't there some kind of ironic oil joke in there, too? Like, <laughs> yes. gas. We can only wish. <gasps> dinosaurs. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my probably mistake. not. I that's just probably not mind. it at all. Yeah, you did, but then I was like, <laughs> no, that's no, too no. deep. That's too deep. That's too awesome. Deep. <laughs> all um, kids, sorry, okay, Lauren, go ahead. So if you break it down, it's like Duran Duran chauffeur. Meet, oh, yeah. Yeah? So me yeah, that song just uh, went dinosaurs, in my head. Dinosaurs, <laughs> me mm-hmm. Dino Squad, me. I'm the baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. There's so many okay. things in Guys, I want to read you some quotes that I uh, lifted. Uh, while you think of Christine from the forum wants to know, if we could shapeshift into any one animal slash dinosaur, what would we pick and why? So you must mull on that while I read some of my favorite animal? quotes. Which what? dinosaur? No, what any animal would you oh, shapeshift animal. into? Oh, but wait, okay. let me do my quotes. We're, we're quietly thinking okay, about cool. it. Okay, quiet. So here's, a, here's one quote. Bo- this is the po- point of view of, of Kelly, the driver. Both men had faces and bodies that sent out a primal call to all women, a call that promised to put adrenaline-pumping excitement into their lives and bring heart-stopping sex into their beds. That was pretty bad. Um, I mean, bad isn't amazing. And then, <laughs> let me get my... Uh, what the hell, Why the hell was she thinking of his hair when she'd fallen into some weird alternate universe where wo- werewolves and dinosaurs battled each, each other in Memorial Park? <laughs> which is like she has a self awareness of how yeah. ridiculous this is, which I think kind of makes uh, makes this. And then, uh, oh, I think you're wrong, Kelly. I know you. I know you. I know what's in your eyes. Hunger. Ty stopped as he reached the side of the bed, recognizing things like that as one of the perks of having a primitive soul hotwired for sex. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> oh God! How did they get so cheesy underground that long? It's like oh. 65 million years of like cheese ball lines just like fed into their brain. He does that the whole book, though. I know. I will. The first few chapters, though, totally dragged me in. Like I was like, "Oh, yeah. this is gonna be lame." And then I read the first two chapters. I'm like, "Oh my God! I gotta keep reading. This is exciting." No, it's- it's you just have to get through. You just have to be like, oh, that part was not good. Let me go to the next one where a dinosaur is <laughs> killing a pack of werewolves. Because <laughs> that happens. Because that uh, happens all the time. <laughs> and everybody's being blasted with testosterone. It's like they literally have an air vent of testosterone just like hitting her in the face because it's like fifteen, yeah. twenty times. <laughs> I love, I love that their cover is that they're was it that they're missionaries saving souls? I'm like, yeah, yeah right. They're super hot guys, first of all. So that's the thing, is that you you get this description of them in the first chapter that the, they're being reincarnated. They're not reincarnated. They're basically taking over the bodies of humans that have just died. Hot humans. But they're hot. super hot. Only the hot ones. Ones. That would attract, fe- but super attract hot. females. Well, yes. In the book, one of them asks, what, what, one of them actually asks Finn, why did you pick these bodies? We're all so hot. And he's like, why not? I mean, that's literally kind of no, like no, the no. answer that he, he has. Says, he says very specifically, I don't want you to have to work hard to get, to get women. So oh, is that what he said? Yeah, yeah, that's what he said. He in that first says, tense meeting. Yeah. I mean, oh come God. on. If they... It's yeah, amazing. 
I just amazing. love how they always want to just rip each other's throats out all the time. It is all like it takes time. the alpha male like like yeah. thing we've talked about for so many episodes and just like goes so far above and beyond <laughs> anything we possibly could have imagined. <laughs> it's just like, oh, he's looking at my woman. I'm gonna rip his throat out. <laughs> it's funny because they're all like. They're oh. all like, oh, is that predator or not a predator? Like they identify predator like, prey, like, predator prey. And then, <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing a, this voice now. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. It's a dinosaur voice. And, and yeah, then there's a there's voice. a trio of brothers who are all blonde and yes. amazingly gorgeous, and they imply that they do everything together. Everything. Oh. And I'm just like, what is going on? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, I kind of want to read more. I want to read the rest of them. There's only three out, but I want Finn's. I want to know what happens to Finn. Like, what the heck's They're going on with reads. him? They're really fast reads, too, because I read the first one in a day. And I was yeah. like... I, Do we I not like, know what Finn is yet? No, it's a mystery. He's it's the mastermind. Still. Okay. Yeah. And He's he doesn't have his book back. out. Yeah. Mm. But the funny thing is they keep talking about how 1111 is a number that keeps coming up and that the world is trying to remind us of the end of the world but we're not noticing the sign. So this is something that <clears throat> that was told to me a long time ago that if you constant like you know when you look at the clock and you mm -hmm. find yourself always looking at the clock at the same time every day, it means something. So if you always look at the clock and it says 911 and no mm -hmm. correlation to obviously the New York tragedy but yeah. 9-11 is supposed to mean that you seek change in your life, right? Oh. Some of us always notice when it's 420, and mm -hmm. then others, 11-11. Uh, and I found it interesting that this story focused on the 11-11 number. So, well, to me, 11-11 to me, yeah. is, a, is a good time, along with 12-34, me too. Uh, have I you love seen, both those times. Have you well, seen? What I thought 1234 is that you make a wish. Well, have you seen what the video, the literal <laughs> Microsoft Paint video for Party Rock? Oh, has yeah. Seen this? yeah. So I when they go, the Party Rock is in the house tonight. <laughs> they, everybody <laughs> just have a good time. They show a picture of times, yeah. and the times are 1111 and 1234. So whenever what? I see those times, I'm like, ah, oh, that's a good time. <laughs> that's a good time. That's so yeah. weird. Those are the two times I always yeah. look at. I'm like, well, I'm lucky now because I look. Isn't yeah, that weird? Because it makes no time. sense. Why? But, but in that's this why that part of the song really well, speaks to me. But according to this book, 1111 means the end of the world. Oh so, yeah. What? Well, Wait. you win some, you lose some. What? Okay. What? What person <laughs> would you? What animal would you shape shift into? Did you guys pick one? Oh. I want to be a panther. Mm -hmm. Really. Really? Yeah, because yeah. my limiting. first World of Warcraft pet was a was a panther, oh. and his name was um was uh what was his name? Um, Snoozer. <laughs> his name was Snoozer. No, God. And his name was Snoozer because he faded because he could you know fade away. He could become invisible and like and I don't know. He, Are he you gonna play like Miss Pandaria? No. You, no? Don't, no. No. I'm kind of into other stuff right now, Felicia. I don't know. The talent well, trees in the go are really good. I have to tell you, I was impressed when I looked it, it up. Well, I've, I played the beta, but I'm playing the Secret World right now, which has a <gasps> Cthulhu, by the way. I love really? Secret World. Actually, Bonnie, you, you would love Secret World because there's a lot of horror. It's, it's awesome. very horror oriented. I feel Can like I... I'm coming in like th like six months too late to this game, but I'm still enjoying yeah. it anyway. But whatever. And I'm 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 real upset that I got married this weekend because now everyone's going to be <laughs> way higher level in Borderlands Two than I am. I am. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that I'm, sucks. I've been Is playing Borderlands. Playing I've been playing Borderlands nonstop for the past week. So wait, what are, are you playing? are you Xbox or PC? Xbox. Oh. Veronica, oh. I Veronica, I downloaded it the PC version, and I can't yeah. play FPS on my that uh, on my desktop. I've got to play on the Xbox. It no, makes me sick. what? No, you can't it, play first-person shooters on Xbox. They're made what? for PC gaming. I'm so much better PC at them. So much easier for first-person no. shooters. No, no. no. I oh, you guys disagree. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Kyla, what animal would you be? Wait, wait, wait. If we're going to oh. talk about video games, can I, can I mention real oh. quick the video game yeah. that I want to play? Ah, so chat room play. agrees with me. Whatever, <laughs> chat room. <clears throat> so, uh, the video Being game surly. that I just, I'm just going to say this once because I never play video games ever. And when you guys talk about video games, I, I feel kind of like uh, the dumb person. So, I will say that um, thanks to the other Hangout show that's on Geek and Sundry called Metadating. I mm -hmm. now want to, which is an awesome show. If you're not watching it, it's like vaginal fantasy, but with guys playing romance uh, dating sim games. That it's game they played this month is crazy. Facade. 
So their oh my god is like if you walked in on your best friends fighting that are a couple, and everything you say depends on whether or not they break up or not. It's like yeah. the most awkward game ever, and I will play that until I die because that is the best video game I have ever seen in my life. Yeah, I wish they did a sequel. It's so long ago. I was like, the 2008 they did that game, and then they were supposed to do a sequel, and I don't think it ever got made, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm just going to say, but... if, you if you haven't watched that show yet, there are other awesome hangouts on Geek and Sundry. You don't have to just watch us, though we are rocking. We're but the best, but, you know. Meditating's hilarious. Oh, certain laser's okay, too. <laughs> certain laser's <laughs> okay, too. <laughs> so, they're, yeah, they're we're really going to put that out there. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes. Okay, Kyla, what would be your animal? This well, Veronica stole my animal because I. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wanted be, I wanted to be a panther too. But that Guys. was only because I was at one point. If I was ever going to get a tattoo, um, I wanted it to be a panther who was eating an ice cream cone. Oh. You know, just very like. <laughs> <laughs> kind of wrapped around a lily. See, that's funny because um. I wanted an ice cream. I wanted a tattoo of an ice cream cone eating a panther. No. Oh. <laughs> That's weird. Uh -huh. That's yeah. weird. Um, so, anyways, panther. on a practical level, being a panther, what are you gonna do? You gonna go? I mean, people would capture you immediately. There's no freedom okay. with being a panther. They're pretty fast. They're pretty fast. What do you mean there's stealthy. no freedom? What do you mean? You have to be. You could be in the jungle, but I want to be a hummingbird because I can go oh. everywhere and suck, and suck nectar. Oh, but then everywhere. you're dumb and you can't kill anything. You're just a, a hummingbird. Yeah. Boring really? hummingbird flying yeah, around. Yeah, what's wrong? That's my wait, wait. Maybe a raptor of some kind, like a bird just, of prey. Yeah. Maybe it should be a bear. Be a hawk. Because... No, bears are too, like, derp, derp, derp. Yeah, but they <laughs> like hot tubs. They like to sit in hot tubs. And I like to sit in hot tubs. You're going to put a bear in a hot tub? What? They like to sit in hot tubs. The bears this feels do. Like yeah. Bird, this feels like Harvey <laughs> Birdman. What are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> All right, Bonnie, what was your animal? Oh, so I've thought about this a lot because I'm a big Harry Potter fan, and I always remember Obama that Weasley, 2012. That whole, sh <laughs> <laughs> that whole shape, the whole shape shifting thing. <clears throat> so I, I always like the whole idea of being a, a raven, because you could fly, you could escape predators quickly, uh, and they're scavengers, so they're not vegetarians. So they still eat meat, so that's cool. Mm -hmm. But. I, I know, and it's goth, you know, the whole Lenore, Edgar Allan Poe thing. So I like the idea of a raven, but it's interesting because it depends. I, By the way, I think panther could totally work because if you're shape-shifting, you could be a panther at night and totally have camouflage. Mm. So that works. All uh, right. Maybe hummingbird was stupid. No, no, hummingbird is amazing. Yeah, hummingbird's good. It's more of an ornamental animal. It's yeah. not like that's a practical use for that, you know. I mean, by it would way, not be... I do yeah. want to say something, Felicia. Did you know that one of the first surveillance drones in Afghanistan was the hummingbird robot? That's cool. I didn't know yeah, that. Think, yeah, Aren't it looks super exactly strong like, too. It looks, it looks exactly like a hummingbird, which is weird because there's not a lot of hummingbirds in Afghanistan. But they used that as the surveillance drone to send out in front of troops so they could see what was around buildings. Interesting. So there is a practical use to being a hummingbird drone. Yeah, you could be a battle bird. Um, oh, oh, before we wrap up, uh, Christine wants to know, oh no, no, Joanne wants to know, what do we think about the last love scene where Ty rubs vanilla lotion and attempts to for <laughs> foreplay all over oh, his I legs while bent over in front of the, <laughs> her, awesome, his woman? Man. I just yeah. kept sm smelling vanilla lotion in a very pungent way, and I was like, this is not sexy. It's I did too. Very yes. I, I, I haven't gotten to that point yet, but. Oh, okay. Well, I want to hear your comments. I have vanilla incense in my house, so I was like, I'm going to just put the bottle right up to my nose uh, and I'm ready. That's weird. Okay, who would oh, you no, cast? Did it, it, like, did it feel weird? Because I was like, is this a Bed Bath and Beyond type of... It felt it was, like a weird moment. It was a weird, weird moment because he was like, this is how you do, are sexy, but it's not because there was another... No. Anyway, I, I don't want to spoil it because Veronica... What is she saying? No, it's okay. You okay. can spoil it. I was saying <laughs> this is how we do it by Montel Williams. Okay, no, last no, question. No, that's, that's a, wait. What's the guy Wait, saying that who? sings that song, chat room? This is how we do it. Isn't it? Oh, this is it? how we do it. Oh, I can't sing this because we'll get sued. Montel. Yeah, tell me to go. No. Montel, no. Montel Jordan. It was Montel Jordan. Thank you, chat room. <laughs> Montel Jordan. Oh, it was yeah. not Belle Biv DeVoe. <laughs> That's not accurate. Not Montel Williams. They only did Poison. I think they only did. Yes, they only did. Bill Cosby. I don't know. Okay. 
Okay, last question. I know that whole song by heart. <laughs> Who would you cast in this book? And then we're going to check our poll and see what our winning books are for next month. Who would you cast? I said, since it's so cheesy, Billy Zane and Pamela Anderson. <laughs> what? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Billy Zane. Zane. You'd have to wear a wig because every guy in this book has long hair. You would have to wear a wig. Billy Zane's I mean, bald. Early Billy Zane in that one superhero movie he did. Huh? Like Orlando Billy Zane. Like, he'd have to be really old school. Oh, he was so hot in that. Oh, or in uh, Critters. He was in, he was in Critters. Yeah. Yeah. He, was in, yeah. he was in Critters, yeah. All right, Billy, Billy Zane. Yeah, ponytail. <laughs> what about you? Uh, okay, so I, I think, um, who was the creepy guy that, that was in the first uh, Christian Bell Batman that played, oh, what's his name? Do you know what I'm talking about? The weird guy with the big eyes? Uh, Killian Murphy? <laughs> yes. Killian Murphy. I think Killian Murphy should play uh, tinsel hair, dude. Oh, yeah. Really? It's a, I don't know that about that. That would be nice. I don't he's know. Not, I just like he's Killian not, Murphy. He's not, he's good. I, have, I think he's attractive, but I don't know if he's, like, like good looking enough. Because Finn is supposed that's to be, like, pretty. turbo, like, perfect. Yeah, perfect. Like, Adonis cream. Oh, oh, that's right. Okay. You're right. You're right. Okay, let me, let me rephrase. Like, the blue eyes is thrown you. His yeah. eyes are amazing. You're totally right. So maybe, because he has to be pretty, right? So maybe uh, pretty. the lead guy from White Collar. <gasps> Matthew Bone? 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 Boner? Matthew no. Boner? <laughs> no. Oh. Uh, I don't Bomer. know his name. Bomer? Yeah. That Bomer. Guy. Yeah, that he's guy. Oh, yeah. Pretty. That's a pretty good one. Because yeah. he's pretty. Yeah? Yeah. He's a pretty guy. I could see him playing that. And what um, about as, the far as, the, as far as Ty, because he has to be muscular, and I'm not into muscular dudes, so I don't really know. I'm into, like, Benedict Cumberbatch types. So that are, like, oh, I just watched British. all of Sherlock season two, mm -hmm. and I cannot, I cannot tell you how good that is. That's the I best know, TV ever made. Yay! Yay! And by the way, you did not win an Emmy, Rob. You're a Cumberbitch with us now. I am. <laughs> I'm 100%. 100%. Right. <clears throat> so what, about, to... um, what about Chris Hemsworth? What about him? Oh, yes. oh, okay. But he was. But Ty was supposed to be like dark haired. Dark haired. Oh. Well, for what about the guy from? Yeah. Uh, did everybody see Magic Mike? Yeah, that's Chatham. No. Ch Channing Tatum. Chatham. Maybe Channing Tatum. Channing Tatum. Whatever. Is that the, which is the child <laughs> actor and which is the hot actor? <laughs> 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 which one was married to John McEnroe? Both of them. Yeah. Which one? <laughs> which one? Not that one. Not that one. Channing Tatum. No. <laughs> Channing O'Neill. Channing. <laughs> Diane Channing. <laughs> <laughs> Diane Channing. <laughs> Not right. Carol, Carol Burnett Channing too. <laughs> <laughs> Carol Channing. Carol Channing. It's <laughs> just Carol Channing. Carol Channing. Oh, it's funny. Carol Channing and Madeline Kahn star yeah. in Eternal <laughs> Pleasure. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to think of any muscular guys. I don't think we need that. Wait, wait, okay, <laughs> wait. Honestly, the only thing that comes to mind is Henry Rollins, and that is not, that's not going to work. So, he's too know. short. He's too, he's, yeah. He's short, yeah. So, I don't know if chat room really... has no suggestions. Chat room Aww. had a couple of good suggestions. Chitty um, Tatum, but... guys. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. you guys are going to be mad at me for my pick for Ty. Because, oh. <laughs> yes. Who is, is it? James McAvoy? <laughs> Joe Manganiello. <laughs> Oh, Joe oh. Matt Gianniello. my oh, go-to pick. It's perfect. He's the right height. He's 6'4". I he saw is. him in person at Dragon Con. Did you see him in person at Dragon Con? Yes, he was and fine. I was, I was trying to angle the introduction, and it didn't, never happened. Oh. With I Joe Matt for like, Who are you talking about? He picks you as the lead role in all of our vaginal fantasy picks. It's weird. <laughs> it's not a good I thought you, I thought you guys should up. meet. <laughs> I thought you guys should meet. Um, so here's my pick. Wait, 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 back up. What has he played? I don't, I'm not familiar with he's, the actors. Oh, he was, oh, plays he's um, Alcide he's Alc from True Blood. And he was in Magic Mike. He was the, he was the he was dark guy Magic in Magic Mike. Mike. Oh. Yes. oh, okay. Uh, Chat room says a, a lot of them part. were, some of them were picturing him because I talk about him too goddamn much on the show. 
mean, um, it's a good pick. He's okay. I, I'm not like I don't like feel very strongly about him. He just has that like look that seems to mm -hmm. fit with all these books for some reason. Yeah. Also, I thought Alexander Skarsgård, if you oh. dyed his hair black or brown, would be really? like the perfect build. I'm not. I don't even watch True Blood, the TV show. It just happened that I actually Googled actors six four, and that's what <laughs> came up. <laughs> and they both came up, and I was so like, random. "Oh, okay, yeah, I can see those guys. Yeah, that's pretty good." And then I thought, maybe, what's your face? Um, oh, Amanda uh, Seafried, Seafried, oh yeah, Seafried yeah. as yeah. Kelly, because she's got that kind of like wide-eyed, like what is happening so, kind of face. Yeah, she'd actually yeah. be a good one. And she's blonde, yeah. and she can do her hair she's wavy. Blonde, yeah. I thought she'd be fun. She looks really pretty when she has her hair wavy. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that I we have a consensus. Good, that's a good pick. Yeah. Okay, guys, I'm going to check our poll and see what our books next month are mm -hmm. as the can creator I, of said I, poll. Can I do a plug real quick? Oh, yeah, do it while I, while I check. Everybody plug yeah. something they want. To plug. I wanted to plug <laughs> that if you haven't checked it out, we did an interview recently with um, the io9 We Come From The Future show on Revision 3. So we all talked about our favorite and not so favorite moments for vaginal fantasy. So if you go on YouTube and do a search for IO9, we come from the future, you can check out our interview that we did. I think it was like last week, but um, I also co-host, so I talk about the Wonder Woman Superman coupling, which I think is a big mistake. So oh, uh, we also oh. talk about that, but we get interviewed. Vag fans, we're all there, so you can see us being interviewed by on a real show. It's kind of cool. It is nice. Um, yeah. And then, of course, Veronica does Sword, Sword and Laser here, right here on Geek and Sundry. So check that out yes, every we, other, every Friday. I will. Yeah. I will do a pimp. We're having. Um, we're having the mm -hmm. wonderful. Uh, all right. So we have a lot of great people on the show coming up. We're having. Um, um, oh God, God, I've had too much wine. Why is this not working? <laughs> <laughs> um, wait. Who is who? Oh my gosh. The, the, she's so good, and she was so amazing. She's she's an author, Felicia, that you like too, and she Ooh. writes um, the steampunk novels. Not Gail Carriger. Gail Carriger. Not Gail Carriger. <laughs> Gail Carriger. <laughs> no. Um, oh, oh, me. Sherry Internet. Priest. Sherry Priest. Yes, we Sherry have the wonderful Priest. Sherry Priest on the show. Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry that I it, it's oh, I've cool. heard a lot of my she mind lately. Loved her stuff. Her stuff. Yeah, she was amazing. Did um, you so read her having... vaginal fantasy book she just wrote? She wrote no, a book about I haven't a, yet. A, a vampire assassin woman who that was excellent. I read Ooh, two of them. Very yeah. cool. So yeah. Sherry Priest was awesome. She was on the show. She'll be on soon coming up. Um, we're, we're also also having Gail Carriger on the show in the next oh. month or two. So she, I'm Gail so excited Carriger. for that. So we've got some great female authors that. coming up soon. What? I love your show. It makes Thank me you. Besides our smutty ones. So thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, the winner of the poll... And gosh, a lot of people voted. About five, five, oh, 320 people voted. Yay. Uh, fantasy. The fantasy category won with Gods and Angels close second. <gasps> oh, okay. And so I have two of them picked out. The question is do you want the one that has more naughty scenes or less naughty scenes as the main pick? More. More. Of more. course. More, <laughs> more. Not surprising. More, more. more. <laughs> okay. So um, the, oh gosh. Uh, well, let me get the author because I didn't write it down. What? Well, it's not the Black Crow. What is it? A Master of Crows. Okay. So our main pick for next month will be Master of Crows by Grace Draven. D R A V E N. Mm. Sorry if I okay. mispronounced that. And our alt will be Poison Study by Maria Snyder. So those are going to be our books next month. They're both fantasy oriented, but they're not like. Uh, heavy epic fantasy like Kushel's Dart. They're they're shorter, quicker reads with uh, that are basically romance books set in a fantasy world. So oh, and we have to we have to before we forget. Um, we have to thank Karen for making the amazing Cthulhu art for our yeah. profile pictures. Thank you. Yes. Oh, you're yes. Awesome. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, she good. also did some some Star Trek ones. Yeah, that's wow. Which are pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, I'm Trek linking. Trek? There's, I just posted in the chat her gallery too. Oh, you can okay. see the the one she did for Bonnie and for me. And what? is there one of Felicia? Oh, there's one of Felicia. I think there's, there's one of me too. I didn't change okay. my avatar. Oh, there you are. Yes. Yeah. There I am. And there's one. Carla and I have been have been uh, Cthulhu, Cthulhu Ronica, and and how do you say yours, Kyla? C uh, Kyle. She, Kaithulu. Kaithulu. There's also a picture of me as a cat. Feline what? day. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, you're, like, you're like an upside down like, like kitty, kitty tummy. Like I want to rub your tummy. 
Oh, I do have one of whiskers. Yeah. That's adorable. I had one, one of Will. I had Cthulhu Bonnie up, but because <laughs> uh, Veronica has bangs like mine, uh, I kept getting accidental Veronica tweets at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I had to like take it off, but I, I will say I really love the art, and I printed it out and framed it, so it's in my apartment frame. Oh, cool. Oh, well, that's I a really, really good really idea. So. Anytime any of you guys do fan art of us, I, we, we all really appreciate it, so thank you. Yes, we do. Yeah, we do. I, yes, we do. I, I think I've had mine up for about a month now, so I am going to switch mm -hmm. it back to regular Veronica face, uh, yeah. but I wanted to have it up for the month before the show. So thank you. Yeah. I got a lot of, a big kick out of trying to explain to people what that was all about. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't <laughs> explain it. I just stopped explaining it. I just, there was no explanation needed. <laughs> oh, um, Felicia, uh, Felicia uh, Kim said that someone wants to know what our second book is. Oh, the second book is Poison Study by Maria Snyder. Mm -hmm. So our main master of crows. And let me just tell you for the record, that is very racy, that book. So Ooh. just a warning for people who, uh, Poison Study is a lot. Um, it's a great book. It's one of my very favorites. I even have it in hardback because I enjoyed it so much. Um, wow. But uh, it's a lot uh, more uh, PG-13 rated. So if you feel uncomfortable with all the racy parts, check the alt out. All right. Well, thanks, you guys. I think it's time to wrap it up. We will see you next month on October 30th, reading fantasy books. Bye. Yay.